today we are going to discuss about the issue that all of us are probably unfamiliar with because we are, our eyes were all focused on Beijing's gold medalist and pretty boys like the Russia-Georgia crisis occurred. It was a civil war between Georgia and South Ossetia, but Russia interferes in this war. And outside of the house, strongly supports the policy that Russia should be punished for its actions in Georgia. In order to win this debate, our side should prove that Russia's actions should be criticized and furthermore show how our policy would improve the current situation. Our policy is as follows. Russia must pay reparation to Georgia, withstand, uh, withdraw its troops from Georgia territory, and uh, face political isolation. The first speaker will analyze the reasons why Russia should be criticized, and the second, se second speaker will explain about our policy and why it should be chosen instead of the opposition's policy. Uh, since uh, this is such a complicated issue, I will first have to devote a lot of time to explain uh, about the general background information about this area. Uh, Georgia gained independence as the Soviet Union collapsed, and an important thing we should have in mind in this debate is that Georgia is currently reaching out to Western countries in order to gain international recognition by um, trying to sign in the EU or the NATO. And within the territory of Georgia are two provinces, and one of them are called South Ossetia, claiming independence, but it's not internationally recognized. Then as Georgia's new president, Saakashvili was elected, Georgia's relationship with Russia became hostile while being inclined towards Western countries. In order to join the NATO, President Saakashvili wanted to settle Georgia's instability by reclaiming Ossetia. Uh, Russia has stepped into Georgia's civil war, and Russia has sent close numbers of so-called peacekeeping troops forced to South Ossetia. And rather than acting as a neutral peacekeeper, uh, Russia has escalated the hostilities through its attacks in Georgian towns and cities outside the conflict zone. The attack caused almost a thousand casualties, uh, not to mention the dev devastation it has caused within its territory. Uh, after a five-day war, both sides signed a peace pact promising to withdraw their troops, but Russia still has not retreated Russian forces. With this case in mind, I would like to explain the first reason why Russia must be criticized. Russia's behavior is similar to the 19th century imperialism. With the end of the Cold War, Russia's prestige declined, and Russia really seems to be uh, diminished by this new world order, as uh, especially by NATO's expansion. Trying to reassert past influences, Russia seems to be eager to speak out to make amends. And Russia's attack, invasion of Georgia, was such a statement. The Washington Post analyzes the Georgian-Russian crisis as a result of Putin's imperialistic uh, ambition to gain dominance in the Eurasian world. With this, with this wealth for petroleum, almost monopolistic supply of oil to uh, Europe, and its third largest military budget, Russia may be on its way. Uh, Maybe on its way to revive the, uh, its dominant role it once had uh, during the Cold War. The commentary stated that Russia is trying to place its neighboring countries within its influence by preventing these countries from uh, aligning with the West. Uh, so Putin's main focus is to prevent them from signing in the NATO, since uh, having a Western ally in the front yard would be would uh, lower their uh, dominant role in this area. So this invasion was more of a threat to other former Soviet Union countries, and Georgia is one of them. Now I will move on to my second reason. Russia has pursued its own interest in Georgia. Its actions preceding the war was more than enough to provoke Saakashvili uh, into a fight. Its peace peacekeepers have ignored to protect Ossetia, it has not even tried to promote the territory's future development. Instead, Russia has tried to assert more influence 
They built up military facilities. They gave out Russian passports to local people to justify their invasion. Although Saakashvili took the radical decision to invade, to reclaim Ossetia, no evidence has been found to support wild claims of genocide by Russia. What information, sir? Rejected and out of order. Uh, Russia had many choices. They could have allowed other countries to settle the conf conflict. They could, have let, uh, they could have let way for other non volatile negotiations, but, Russia, but Russian troops, which were supposed to keep peace, has done just, has done just the opposite. For these reasons, Russia's brutal behavior toward Georgia is not excusable and should be punished. The second speaker will explain about our policy. Thank you. and not practical. The first speaker, I will elaborate on the point that punishment is not necessary. And second speaker, Kim Kyung ah will clarify that punishing, punishing is not beneficial. And lastly, our first speaker, Kim Jun sik will wrap up our <laughs> overall argument. Before I go on, I'm going to give some rebuttals to the prop team's first argument. Um, the first speaker of the prop team said, this will punish um, Russia is um, shows some kind of imperialism, and he said, he, since Russia is, is prestige is declining, um, it all it can cause cold war, and I suppose that's what's gonna happen if we punish Russia. Now I'll give you the status quo and prove that punishment is totally unnecessary. To repeat the definition. Punishment is a penalty for an offense, sin, fault, or violation. Again, offense, sin, fault, or violation. Ladies and gentlemen, have Russia ever committed offense, sin, fault, or violation? No. Georgia attacked South Ossetia, of which 80% of the population is Russian. Ladies and gentlemen, no. I repeat, Georgia attacked first. As a result, Russia, in order to protect its citizens, attack Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, this was simply a war between two countries. Two countries fought, and one country um, won against the other. Can winning in the war be a reasonable cause for being punished? Georgia, which technically began the war by attacking South Ossetia, is calling for Russia's punishment just because it lost in the war. They have no such justified reason for the punishment. Since there is no punishing, no reason for punishing Russia, it is not necessary. What exactly do we get from punishing Russia? Are there any gains? Ladies and gentlemen, if I ask you again, what do we actually get from punishing Russia? If there aren't any gains from the policy, we have to conclude that punishing Russia is a policy without any purposes. You say that punishing Russia is for the sake of world peace. However, using forces against force brings nothing, nothing but another suffering. Punishing Russia only threatens the world peace. As a result, we have come up with a new solution which is better and gives more positive effects to the world. Our policy is to encourage the whole world, including Russia, to help Georgia by means of financial aid or voluntary works. This is a more peaceful way than punishing Russia, because it never forces the countries, but encourages the it but encourages the countries. Yes, punishing can can be a solution. However, evidently we have a much better plan. 
As the second speaker will give benefits of our policy that will outweigh gains by punishing Russia. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, there is a better alternative. If there's a, a, better, a better, better alternative, why not change it to a better one? Now, um, our second speaker, Kim Kyung-ha, will elaborate on the point that punishing Russia is not beneficial nor practical. Thank you. Okay, let's welcome the second speaker for the proposition side, Kang Nahi. immediately. Although ceasefire has reached a reached long time ago, Russian troops are still staying in Georgian territories. Ladies and gentlemen, those troops remaining in Georgian territory is now robbing military supplies from military camps of Georgia and disrupting all kinds of services existing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not acceptable. This is totally ignoring Georgia's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Remaining troops are causing much more pain to Georgian citizens, and this must end now. The Russian troops must leave immediately. Not only the reinforced armies during the war, but also the original peacekeeping force of Russia 
in Russia in South Ossetia must leave as well. The Georgian because it has been the source of intervention of Georgian territory, Georgian politics. Russia's so-called peacekeeping force will be replaced with a new, new peace peacekeeper sent from the UN. This force will protect the Georgian citizens and South Ossetians from the further, further conflict. The new international peacekeeping force is neutral, and therefore, they will be able to carry out their responsibility as a peacekeeping force preventing violent conflicts. Third, it, um, third they exclude Russia from G8 and postpone international meeting involving Russia temporarily. As the most in influential and powerful country, Russia must um, engage in so so solving global issues and work for greater good of the world. However, it has failed. Russia has abused its powers and has continued to threaten other countries and even attack Georgia. Russia has ignored international laws or moral, and it has been very unethical and irresponsible in this world. Russia has refused ceasefire suggest agreements suggested by Georgia, and it has delayed withdrawal of the troops and caused even more damage, and also attacked towns outside the conflict zone and caused that resulted deaths, hundreds, deaths of hundreds of innocent civilians, destroyed houses, hopes, took away opportunities, and everything of Georgia. Russia does not deserve this title or authority or respect of G8. The policy will put on, um, the, this policy will put into action until Russia cooperates with the previous causes of policy, and this political pressure will urge Russia to co cooperate with Russia's efforts to regain peace and regret their unethical and their irresponsible actions in this war. So, this this policy is both practical, necessary, and beneficial for the for the peace and justice. Please vote for, for this policy. Thank you. After this speech, I'll call on two of you to make four speeches. So think about what you might say for either side. Let's welcome the second speaker for the outside, Kim Gyeong Ah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm standing right here just as well as Kirill, as the second speaker of the opposition team, which opposes to the motion to punish Russia for its actions in Georgia. So far, our team studying first speaker, Kiryong, has given the fundamentals of our speech, uh, of our policy, encouraging international society as well as Russia to help Georgia recover. She presented you a brief information about the status quo and why the proposition's policy is unnecessary. From now on, I, as the second speaker of the opposition team, will explain how the policy proposed by the proposition is not beneficial nor practical. Before moving on, I'll rebut some points made by the proposition team. First of all, the first speaker, uh, the second speaker of the proposition team mentioned that Russia was the one who's, who was violent because it, uh, it attacked Georgia. But actually, the one who attacked Georgia first, uh, one who began the war first was Georgia, not Here Russia. I am. No, thank you. And this policy would gain peace, but Oh, but I'll, I, I will rebut this point further and um, my points on why this policy is not beneficial. Also, she said that Russia should compensate Georgia, but we did not say we will not compensate, but punishing is not the best solution. It's, uh, yeah, it's not the best solution. <laughs> and, um, in order to, to save South Ossetians, she said that UN should send the peacekeeping troops, but how can you ensure peace of South Ossetians? Because Georgia was the one who attacked them first, and they are in danger. Yo, that's am. why the reason. That's the reason why Russia went there Yo, in am. the first place. No, thank you. Now moving on to my arguments. First, ladies and gentlemen, punishing Russia is not beneficial at all. It is not beneficial for one. World peace will be threatened. My you online know, judges, isn't Russia react, isn't Russia's reaction towards punishment so obvious? Russia certainly will not sit there and just look just 
accept the punishment to fo and follow what other countries tell Russia to do. If the pressure, whether it's economic, military, or political, are keep on oppressing Russia, mi military collisions you between Russia and other countries, such as United States, and the United States will become inevitable. For instance, on August 20th, U.S. and Poland signed a treaty of building missile camp in Poland. Russia has shown its discomfort and irritations toward the treaty and announced that if the treaty is extended to further degree, Russia's reaction will not be limited to a... Do I, ma'am? Yes. Do you understand the current situation, economic and political situation? Yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> will not be limited to a diplomatic response. However, if Russia gets even more pressed under the name of punishment, as I stressed before many times, ladies and gentlemen, military conditions may become reality. For the sake of world peace, ladies and gentlemen, um, <laughs> it is necessary to enforce opposition's policy of encouraging Russia and other nations to help Georgia recover rather than punishing Russia. Furthermore, another yeah, reason for the... Yes. That is part of our policy. We want to help Georgia to reconstruction. Yes, but not yeah. by punishing. I said that. <laughs> and furthermore, another reason for the punishment being not beneficial is influence on world economy. If I may ask you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen, Russia provides 25% of oil and gas to Euro European nations according to ECIPE's research. If Russia, as a revenge for punishment, suddenly raises the price of those energy or even refuses exporting it, the world will fall into a chaos. Chaos, I man. Yes. Uh, chaos, <laughs> <laughs> energy resource for sure, and aggravation on economy, which is already in great danger. Secondly, I'll I'll briefly move on to the third argument of our policy. Mm. No. Why this? Why <laughs> the proposition policy is impractical? It is certain that there will be myriads of nations afraid of being disloyal to Russia by approving punishment of Russia. Moldova is a great example of the nation in this case because even though it's in a similar status with Georgia, which is seeking for a perfect separation and independence from Russia, it is just sitting there and looking at what's happening in Georgia because it's afraid that it will be the next target of Russia. And because of of those points I made that punishing Russia is impractical and not beneficial at all. Our policy is much better and much more realistic. So please, ladies and gentlemen, as a justified, um, as a very fair and intelligent judges, please vote for our policy. Thank you. Okay, so do we have any volunteers who'd like to speak this time? Floor speeches. Volunteers. How about, um, Yingyang and Dongju. <laughs> Any preference? <laughs> Any preference for sides? Pop? Prop. You can swing the camera around for me.
아, 잠깐, 야, 너 봐봐, 줘. 야, 협조해봐. 야, 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 perspective. I think the, the, the biggest point here is that it's Georgia that started the fight first. And of course they had a good reason for it. Um, they like, attacked Russia for their independence, their freedom. And like, we can all clearly see that and it's sensible. But still it's the thing that they started first. Like when you're in a fight, and one starts it, you can't, you can't blame the uh, one who was punched first for, <laughs> for punching the guy who started first harder. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and, and more, I think, proposition is maybe being too vague. I mean, who is exactly going to punish them? Like, who is, who is like, powerful enough? to punish Russia, and is Russia even going to accept it? Are they going to like accept the punishment that one decides for them? Thank you. Thank you to both of our floor speakers. Let's now give uh, Kim Junji the last South Ossetia first was attacked by Georgian troops, forming lots of controversies in Russia because more than 80% of people in South Ossetia are actually Russian citizens. This led Russia to outward. This led Russia to a state, and they ended up attacking Georgia's mainland to prevent some more of their citizens from dying. First, they were being attacked by Georgia, and then now they are being criticized by international society for the actions what they did. Community, international community. The international community. <laughs> but this is a complete nonsense. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the final speaker for the opposition side, claiming that punishing Russia is Russia's actions in Georgia is nonsense. I will first rebut some of the some of the speeches made by the previous speakers in the proposition side. Then I'll move on to why we, the opposition side, has won this debate. First, one of their policies stated that getting Russia out of G8 can be beneficial for the world, but getting Russia out of G8 is not beneficial for the world in reality because G8 is a group of countries whose economy is very influential to the world's economy. And if we get out, if, if we expel Russia from this group, they won't have that much access to exporting more natural, POI, sir. No, natural gases to other countries, and their reputation will drop. And POI, sir. No. <laughs> and with, with much strength, Russia is very hard to handle, and Russia has lots of influences in European 
nations because they are the main supporter of the energy, no, energy sources in Russia, in, in the whole European nations, and not only European nations. It is considered as the second largest exporter of oil around the world. And, sec and secondly, the first speaker of the proposition side mentioned that the, att the attacking behavior of this Russia, Russia is actually a threat to other countries that were free from Soviet, Soviet Union in the, in the past days. And we researched about this and we found some interesting facts about Moldova. Moldova was in fact one, of the, one part of the Soviet Union co countries and Moldova is now currently afraid of Russia's revenge when Moldova supports for Georgia's side. So, so, Moldova, so, in, so in essence, it is important to encourage Russia, not punish Russia, because this policy will gain, will give more other countries to uh, show their opinions of Russia because the word encourage is much less offensive than word punish. No. Then I will move on to my main argument, explaining why we have won this debate. Opposition policy, which is to encourage lots of other countries to, and Russia to help Georgia, has, has more benefits, is more necessary, and is more practical, while punishing Russia has lots of side effects, such as economic no, hardships. No. Economic hardships in countries that are relying on Russia, rising tension between Russia and the United States, just like Kyoma mentioned as the example of Poland, and most importantly, compact amount of natural resources exported from Russia. And as I mentioned, Russia is the first largest exporter of natural gas in the whole world and the second largest exporter of oil. Considering this condition, if we just think about this more yeah, thoroughly, Rush, Russia isn't the most practical, uh, so punishing Russia isn't the most practical way to solve the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, giving actual penalties to Russia can solve only short-term problems, include, uh, such as rebuilding in rebuilding Georgia. But if the image of Russia is irreversible and its economy will work, get, get worse, and with all the investments done on Russia, it can influence world economy as badly as possible. If we really look into our, really into our future goals, we, ladies and gentlemen, will act to benefit all of us. Punishing can damage several, while encouraging can save a lot. If the purpose of punishing is nothing, it's better to put aside our emotional opinions about Russia and think more critically and think more with with more wider view, view, viewpoint that can lead us lead us to more benefits in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, now think about who is right. The proposition side who was so narrow sided and only stick to the present and that, and or the opposition side which was well supported by the long term solutions that we can possibly suggest for future goods in our world. So if you want to see better peaceful environment in the future, please go for opposition side. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, the last speaker for today's debate uh, is going to be Shin Dongsa. Let's welcome him. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a third speaker of the proposition side, and I was, I'll start my, I'll start my rebut first. Um, they just kept saying that they will revenge by uh, stopping the export of the oil. So let me tell you this much: Russia produces a significant amount of natural resources. They export a large portion of the EU. And it also uh, is a major export country. Uh, Russia's major export country includes many Western countries like Germany, Netherlands, and U.S., and especially U.N., which is 4.6% of Russia's export. Uh, trade traded $267 billion. Once again, stopping its trade is harmful in itself. They're suiciding by, by stopping their export. They're totally forgetting by stopping their exports, they, it will be harmful to themselves, too. Um, Russia is, in top of that, currently, because of the, the whole situation, economic situation of the US, U.S. financial crisis, Russia's economy is in crisis because of war and U.S. financial crisis. The economy is, is at the one of the most unstable times ever. And let me tell you, if Russia refused to follow their policy and to try to pay back 
and turn against the world, it, it will worsen its economy and cause critical impact on Russia that cannot be recovered soon. Therefore, it's very unlikely, unlikely that Russia will react is, is such irrational, ladies and gentlemen. And they are saying that we just have to compromise, compromise with what's wrong just because they might revenge, which is suicide for them. Now, let's, um, Russia is one of the most powerful countries around the world. Uh, not only have it, it has military power, political power, but they also have natural resources currently abusing as a weapon. And in recent years, Russia has been threatening neighboring countries. Uh, in this case, Georgia was a victim. And in this crisis, other nations, especially international communities, should never neglect the situation uh, but, um, and punish Russia for what they have done. They, their responsibility is to correct what's going wrong, and they have to correct what Russia has done, ladies and gentlemen. Our Prime Minister has shown the necessity of our policy, and the Deputy Prime Minister has shown the necessity, uh, uh, the beneficial and practicality of our policy. Do I, sir? Yes? Um. Our policy is much more realistic since it is it'll be easier to get other countries involved. For example, we um, will Greece and Moldova or um thank Ukraine. You, sir. Uh, thank <laughs> you, ma'am. We will talk about that later. Um, let's let's look at their side of um, opinions and policies. Uh, first of all, they didn't accept much or play your eyes, which is they don't have confidence about their policy. And they don't seem seriously dealing with it. Thank you. Uh, they and they neglected the key issues like human rights, war ethics, and severe damages in Georgia. They failed to understand the current situation of Russia economically, politically, and the war. Um, out of order. And they failed to understand the history of this crisis, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and their, their policy of helping Georgia, it is one of our policy, and we want to help reconstruct Georgia, and that's what we want. And they use the big differences of definition of punishment to justify their opinion. That was pretty ridiculous. Yes, and we'll move to the main clashes of this debate. First of all, the justification. They justify they, that Russia can possibly attack Georgia because they have to protect their citizens. But ladies and gentlemen, they didn't get, give any evidence that, that they are Russian citizens. We show that they dis dis distributed the passport in order to make them as a part of their... Formation, sir. Out of order. Um, but they did not give any evidence. And also, we, as we tell you, uh, should we compromise, compromise with what's wrong just because we fear of the revenge? Ladies and gentlemen, Russia knows their situation. They know their economic and political situation, ladies and gentlemen. And they know it's suicide for them to uh, turn against the war, ladies and gentlemen. And the territorial issue, they failed to say anything about this situation, ladies and gentlemen. And it's nonsense to this, for them to keep insisting Georgia uh, started the war. They didn't even give any, they failed to uh, say anything about the territorial issue. And they also, about the peacekeeping situation, the peacekeepers was not natural, they are not neutral. And they keep interventing, they supported the guerrilla attacks of um, South Ossetia. And later they intervened in the policy too. Their uh, South Ossetian president is actually Russian, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, 1,492 1, civilians' uh, life has been taken away. 158,000 people have lost their home. And we proved that this loss was due to the greediness of Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, our team supports Georgia and its people, sovereignty, uh, democracy, and uh, territorial integrity. And Russia has clearly encroached upon them. Ladies and gentlemen, if you support and believe in peace and justice, please vote for us. Thank you.